Greetings. This is uh, Neurosciences Connections. It's a production of the Department of Neurosciences at UCSD, and, and I'm Bill Mobley, Chair of the Department, and very happy to be today with uh, Robert Leshner, who's recently joined us to join our Child Neurology Division, but also to uh, enhance and uh, increase the quality of our programs in children's neuromuscular disorders. And so, Bob, welcome to UCSD. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and and uh, what's going to happen here at UCSD? Okay, um, well, I was the product of a pastoral upbringing in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, my dad was a general practitioner, and is the case with many uh, individuals of, of that generation. His office was on the first floor, and we lived on the second floor. And I guess uh, that made me a doctor uh, of inevitability, that this was the role model that I had, that a physician was available to his patients. 24-7, and uh, it's something which I hope to be able to continue as long as life and breath is within me. After uh, my misspent youth, I spent my uh, undergraduate and graduate years at Cornell, and then um, my wife and I moved around to Vermont, to Colorado, to Georgia, D.C., San Diego 30 years ago, and then came back to the East Coast where I spent uh, 20 years at the Medical College of Virginia. And what I hope to do is bring this clinical experience to UCSD. I hope to be able to educate by what limited success and more important, the mistakes I've made along the way to use as teaching points for our medical students and residents. And I want to bring us into the new molecular era of pediatric neuromuscular disease, especially as it relates to some of the more common disorders like Duchenne dystrophy and spinal muscular atrophy. I think we're at an absolutely critical and extraordinarily exciting time in our understanding of these diseases. And I honestly believe that within my practicing lifetime, this is gonna translate into much more effective therapies for these and many other neurogenetic diseases. Bob, I agree with you. This is a, it really is an exciting time. And at UCSD, what we're attempting to do is to bring people like you who have a sense of, a very strong sense of the clinical domain, what, the, what these disorders look like, how they impact patients' lives, but at the same time have strong linkages with the science. So um, for me, and I think for the department, your recruitment is really exactly in the middle of the target zone for us to facilitate just this kind of translation of ideas from one domain to another. So are there projects right now that you're involved in that uh, you're especially excited about? We are. We hope to participate in a study of biomarkers for spinal muscular atrophy, getting both clinical, biochemical, molecular genetic assays, which are going to inform uh, translational projects, bringing this to the bedside, doing rational treatments rather than firing uh, a 45 caliber bullet into a dark closet hoping to hit the moth. I think that by our understanding the molecular and cellular basis of the disease, we're really going to be able to bring rational and reasonable treatments to the marketplace within the next five years. It's like really exciting. Say maybe a little bit about SMA because not all of our viewers will know about that. SMA stands for spinal muscular atrophy. It's a disorder of the cells in the spinal cord which send out processes to meet muscle. And when these cells don't do their job properly, the muscle atrophies, therefore spinal cells, muscular atrophies, SMA. And it is the number one genetic killer of children under the age of two. And although it's rare by the standards of a general practitioner or an emergency room clinic, it is one of the most common pediatric neuromuscular diseases worldwide. And as such, it really deserves a special place in both the research and the clinical arenas because advances made in this disorder are going to carry over to treatment protocols. I am very, very confident for a wide variety of, of both neurologic and neuromuscular diseases. And not in just children, but adults as well. SMA usually starts in the first six months of life, but the oldest patient I've diagnosed with SMA is 65 years of age. Again, the spectrum of genetic illness is something which we're just beginning to appreciate, how spectacular, how, how enriched, and how totally perplexing these clinical variations are. 
And we have to understand that so that we can really attack the basic cellular process and try to find out what makes one child susceptible to death at six months of age, why someone else can walk into your office with the quote-unquote same disease in their mid-60s. Bob, we're delighted that you're here. Thanks for being with us, and thanks for joining us on Neurosciences Connections.